Welcome to using Replay Manager with Microsoft SQL Server. In this video, you'll see how to quickly and easily protect your SQL Server databases that are stored on a Dell Storage Center. SQL Server 2014 will be used in the demonstrations, but the backup and recovery methods shown will work with any version of SQL Server that's supported by Replay Manager. Let's get started by connecting to the database server using the Replay Manager Explorer. Since this is the first time connecting to the server, we first need to click on Add Server underneath Server Connections in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Enter the server name. The IP address would work as well. And then click on Connect. When you first connect to a server, you'll see all of the backup sets that have been created on that server. In this particular case, there are five backup sets, and they've all been created using the SQL Server Backup extension. In the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see that there are two backup extensions on this particular server. One is for backing up local volumes, and the other is for SQL Server databases. I'm going to click on the SQL Databases icon to create a backup set that will protect SQL Server databases. In the SQL Server Backup extension, you'll see all of the databases that are on the server. To the right of the database list is a list of all of the SQL Server Backup sets, as well as the restore points that those backup sets have created. The first thing we're going to do is create a new backup set, and you'll see just how easy it is to start protecting your databases. I'm going to select the Big Demo DB database. That's a one terabyte demo database. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see that the Big Demo DB database uses the I and J drives. Replay Manager determines the volumes that are used by the database when you select it. These are the volumes that Replay Manager will take a replay of when the backup set runs. Now that I've selected the database I want to protect, I'm going to click on Create Backup Set on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to give the job a different name. You can review the list of databases that have been selected for the backup set. There are two options you need to configure for each backup set. The first one on the left is the retention policy. You can tell Replay Manager to keep a certain number of restore points or a certain number of days worth of restore points. The next option is the VSS full backup option. If you check this box, Replay Manager performs a full backup. If you do not check the box, it performs a copy-only backup. Either way, the entire database gets backed up. The difference is the copy-only backup is an out-of-band backup that doesn't alter any of the metadata inside of SQL Server that affects the restore chain. We can also define a schedule for this backup set right here from the screen. I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking on Schedule for Later and then clicking on the Modify button. Schedules can be either a one-time schedule, which allows you to run a backup set at one point in the future, or a recurring schedule. We're going to create a recurring schedule. You can set the days that the schedule runs on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. We'll create a daily schedule. And within that day, you can tell it to run at a particular time or run at a regular interval. One of the things that's a little unique to Replay Manager is that the intervals throughout the day are set in 15-minute increments. The big implication of that is the most often a backup set can run is every 15 minutes. So you can see I can set it to 15 minutes, I can click it and go to 30, 45, 60, and so on. I can also narrow the range in which the schedule runs. You could, for example, create a backup set that backs up all of your databases only during your business day. I could also click this exclude time range option, and this has the backup set run outside of the time range. So maybe this particular backup set, you don't want it to run during your business day. In this particular case, I'm going to create a very simple schedule that will run every day at 10 p.m. A new feature that was added in Replay Manager 7.6 is the ability for the backup set to try again if it fails. You can select that by clicking on Retry Failed Backup Sets. And you can configure it with two different options. One is to tell it how long to wait in between retries, and the other is to tell it how many times it should retry before it stops. In this particular case, we'll set the retry interval to five minutes and tell it to retry two times. And then click OK. The schedule's defined. 
we'll go ahead and click on Submit to create the backup set. We now see the backup set in the list to the right of the databases. Any job, whether it has a schedule or not, can be run on demand. You simply select the backup set and then click on Run Now. Replay Manager asks you if you want to run outside of the schedule. In this case, we do. Click on Yes. And Replay Manager executes the backup set. Replay Manager is going to leverage VSS, which in turn will tell SQL Server to take a checkpoint, which writes all the dirty pages out of memory to disk. It then holds all of the writes within SQL Server, and while the writes are held, replays are taken of the database volumes. Once the replays are done, then writes resume again, and the database is in the exact same state it was at the beginning of the backup. One of the things that you notice is that these restore points are created very quickly, and that's because taking a replay generates almost no I.O. All that's done is a metadata operation that freezes the writable pages on the volume, so you can back up very large data sets in a very short period of time. If you think about what has to happen with a native backup, you have to read every page out of the database and write it to an external file, and that's a very I.O. intensive operation. Now that we've created a backup set, let's go ahead and perform some recoveries. You may or may not have noticed when I was selecting databases that the list of backup sets and restore points on the right changes, and that's because it acts as a filter on that list when you select databases. So if I'm interested in working with the AdventureWorks 2012 database, only those backup sets and restore points will show on the list to the right. If we go to SQL Server, we'll see all of the four databases we saw in the Replay Manager Explorer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the AdventureWorks 2012 database. That database is gone, so let's go back to the Replay Manager Explorer and restore it using one of our restore points. The AdventureWorks 2012 database is no longer in the list of databases because it's been removed from the server, but it's still available in the restore point. So let's go ahead and select the most recent restore point from the hourly job and recover that database. Once you select a restore point, there are two different methods that you can use to recover SQL Server databases. You can either restore the databases from the restore point, or you can expose volumes from the restore point and attach databases from the exposed volumes. Let's go ahead and perform a restore. We'll click on Restore. That brings up the Restore Snapshot dialog box. You have the ability to pick and choose which databases you want to recover. We'll make sure that only the AdventureWorks 2012 database is selected, and then we'll go ahead and click on Restore. Behind the scenes, Replay Manager is creating view volumes on each of the replays that are part of this restore point. It's mapping those view volumes to this database server, and then it's copying the database files, the MDF and LDF files, from those view volumes to the original location of the database. One thing to keep in mind with this particular type of recovery is that it is actually copying the database files, so for larger databases, this type of recovery can take some time. Fortunately, the AdventureWorks 2012 database is relatively small, so the restore completes fairly quickly. You can see it's already showing up again in the list of databases in Replay Manager, but let's go ahead and look at SQL Server. Inside of SQL Server, we'll right-click on Databases and refresh the list, and we can see we've recovered the AdventureWorks 2012 database. You can also perform a side-by-side -side type of restore using these restore points. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back to the Replay Manager Explorer. From there, we want to select the database that we want to do a side-by-side -side restore with. So we'll go ahead and use the same database, AdventureWorks 2012. We'll go ahead and use the same restore point and also the same restore method. We'll click on Restore. It brings up the same dialog box we saw at the last restore. I'm going to select only the AdventureWorks 2012 database. But instead of just clicking on Restore, I can click on this button at the end of the row and specify a different name. So we can restore a copy of this database alongside the original. So I'll just call this AW Replay. We'll assign a new path for the database files. Click OK. And now that database will be restored alongside the original database and have a name of AW Replay. 
There's another option I want to point out below the list of components. That's the Do Not Recover Databases option. This option is used to leave the database in a state that will allow you to apply additional transaction log backups. So what this means is you can use these restore points to create the starting point of your restore chain that includes transaction log backups. In this case, we're not going to apply additional transaction log backups, so we'll leave that option unchecked and just click on Restore. It's the same process, copying files from the view volumes to the database server, but instead of the original location, it's going to the location that was specified in the dialog box, and then it'll recover the AW replay database using those database files. If we go back to SQL Server, we'll first have to refresh the list of databases. And now we have another database called AW Replay that's a copy of the AdventureWorks 2012 database. So you can use this recovery method to either replace existing databases, replace databases that are missing, or put a copy of the database alongside the original database. Let's take a look at the other way to recover SQL Server databases. Rather than restore databases from the restore point, let's expose volumes from the restore point and attach a database from those exposed volumes. For this demonstration, we'll use the one terabyte database to show you how fast this type of recovery can be. We'll go ahead and select the Big Demo DB database, and then we'll go ahead and use the restore point that we created earlier in the demo. We'll click on Expose. We can now present this point in time using different drive letters or mount points. In this case, we'll go ahead and use the M drive letter for the data drive. And the O drive letter for the log drive. We also need to make the exposed volumes writable. And this is because we're going to attach databases from the exposed volumes. And that process does write a little bit as SQL Server runs the crash recovery process. We'll go ahead and check Make Exposed Volumes Writable. One of the side effects of doing this is that this restore point will no longer be managed by Replay Manager, so we won't see it in the Explorer anymore. We'll click on Expose. And Replay Manager is going to start out the same way with this recovery as it did with the restore. It's going to create few volumes on the replays that are part of the restore point. It's going to map them to the database server, but instead of copying files, it'll just present those view volumes as the MNO drive. The great thing about this is that it is very fast. There's not a lot of I.O. being performed. The process of creating view volumes simply references pages that already exist on the storage center and presents them to the database server. Now that the expose is complete, we can go back to SQL Server and attach the database from the MNO drives. In the Management Studio, we'll right-click on Databases and select Attach. We'll click the Add button. And now we need to select the primary database file for the database we're trying to recover from the M drive. There's the primary database file. We'll click OK. SQL Server is still remembering the old log location. So we'll want to change it to use the O drive instead of the J drive. We'll also want to change the name of the database. And that's because we're not replacing the existing database. Now we could go ahead and use this type of recovery to replace an existing database, but we'd have to drop the original database before we try to attach a new one. We'll go ahead and click OK. And just that quickly, we have another copy of our one terabyte database on the database server. The recovery time using this recovery method is really hard to beat. It goes extremely fast, even for large data sets. The next thing we'll look at is how to maintain backup sets and restore points. We'll go ahead and select the AdventureWorks daily backup set, and we'll click on Modify Settings. In this dialog box, you're able to change any attribute of the backup set. One of the things that's new in Replay Manager 7.6 is the ability to add and remove databases from the backup set. You can see in this particular case that one of the AdventureWorks databases is missing. We can easily add it by selecting from the list of available items and clicking on the Add button. We'll go ahead and click Submit, and now this backup set will protect all three AdventureWorks databases. We also have the ability to remove databases. 
We can click on Modify Settings again, select the database we want to remove, click on Remove, and then click Submit. We can also alter the schedule at any time for any of the backup sets. Under Scheduling on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see options to suspend the schedule, modify the schedule, or delete the schedule. If you suspend a schedule, the backup set will no longer run until the schedule is resumed again. We can do that very easily by clicking on Suspend Schedule, and you'll see that that option changes to Resume Schedule. So to resume the schedule, we'll simply click on that again. We can also click on Modify Schedule to alter the schedule, and that brings up the same dialog box that we used to create a schedule earlier in the video. We can also simply delete the schedule. If we delete a schedule, the backup set will no longer run, but all of the restore points will remain in Replay Manager. We can very quickly delete a schedule, click on Yes for confirmation, and the schedule will be removed. We can at any time add the schedule back again, so I can go ahead and click on Modify Schedule, redefine my recurring schedule that runs every day at 11.55, and click OK. There are also options for restore points. We've already talked about restore and expose. If our restore point had been exposed, we could unexpose it. If our restore point had already been imported, we could unimport it. And you'd need to do that if you wanted to transport that restore point to another server. We could also delete an individual restore point. We can also tell Replay Manager to not enforce the retention policy on a particular restore point. So if this selected restore point was one we wanted to keep for some reason, we could simply come down to the right here and click on Force Keep. If we decided at some point in the future that we did want the retention policy to go ahead and allow it to expire, we can just say Allow Auto Deletion to essentially turn off that Force Keep. We also have the ability to transport a restore point to another server. Keep in mind when you do that, the restore point is no longer available on the original server. The target server has to be listed under Server Connections in order to transport it to that server. This concludes the video showing how to use Replay Manager with Microsoft SQL Server. Thank you for watching and have a great day.